heart of Central Texas, it's the Best of the Outdoors podcast. Brought to you by Texas Fish and Game Magazine, the voice of the Texas outdoor nation. I'm your humble host, Dustin Von Warnke, author, outdoor writer, videographer, speaker, blogger, podcaster. Man, am I excited that you have tuned into our show, whether you are downloading it, streaming it on YouTube, streaming it on uh, your mobile device, or wherever you're listening. Thank you so much for doing so and checking out our show today. Well, we're back this week with another show. Excited to have another guest on the show this week, and uh, this is Rex Holmes Jr. He is the owner of Vapor Trail Sense, and Rex has a whole lot of uh, information to offer to us about deer hunting and hog hunting and things that we do here in Texas and, and outside of the state um, that is just amazing, the, the technology that he's come up with in his products. and. Um, I just placed my first order with Vapor Trail since they ran with us in the August, I'm sorry, the October issue of Texas Fishing Game, and um, I got really intrigued by their products. Ordered some, just got them the other day, and uh, have really enjoyed um, checking them out and using their scent control products as well as their uh, flashlight. They've got a really awesome flashlight, display flashlight. Fifty-five dollars of free shipping, and uh, it's the brightest headlamp I've ever owned. I mean, the thing is just crazy. Uh, it charges, has a little charger and everything. It's got a 20 hour battery life on low and a 10 hour battery life on high and a little LED display screen. It's pretty cool. So definitely want to recommend you check these guys out. So back into hunting season this year and um, I'm, I recorded the show in late uh, September, the last show in late September with Lou Murillo and we're going to be talking about hunting again and I'm really excited to have this guest on because I've learned a lot from him over the years on hunting and scent control and how deer and hogs, you know, uh, smell scent, how they detect it, how they interpret it, and so on and so forth. So that's what this show is going to be dedicated to, is just kind of the uh, the biology of a deer and uh, and just those kind of things. So we'll get into fishing later um, into the, uh, the next few podcasts that we get into here in the fall. But since we're just entering bow season here and about halfway through the first month of October, I wanted to definitely get some information out there for... Um, for you bow hunters out there especially but then for you gun hunters as well as we enter november um and have a new show for you about that kind of stuff so really excited to have you guys part of the show please subscribe to the podcast if you've not done so already it is free we get a new show every two weeks when we pump this out and we blast that out in facebook and facebook groups and social media and um we have a podcast page on of the best of the outdoors of all the podcasts we've done with texas fishing game and we've been going on doing these regular shows for quite a while now uh, you can visit that at fishgame.com forward slash podcast you can listen to all of our shows there on your mobile device or on your computer and then we also have uh we're, we're on itunes we're syndicated all over the place and i wanted to also recommend that you subscribe to the show so that way you get the new shows without having to think about it automatically downloaded on your mobile device so um also wanted to mention an awesome podcast that i've been listening to lately it is a group of texas guys that are public land hunters it is called the cast blast grill chill podcast and two guys that uh that are cousins that talk about um, a lot of hunting and fishing stuff and really enjoyed checking up with them uh this podcast just got started and i'm trying to give them some support to get it off the ground and uh, really enjoy them they're avid listeners to our podcast and i want to definitely give them some love jeremy and trevor um on itunes you can pick that up or uh, they've got a um they've got a bunch of stuff out in social media they've got a facebook page so definitely check that out subscribe to our show and if you've not done so already sign up for our newsletters with texas fishing game the uh, best of the outdoors is broadcast on the thursday newsletter where you can click directly on the link and listen to it um but we have tuesday wednesday and thursday newsletters three times a week uh they come out every week and really good engaging content and all those so wanted to definitely recommend you try that out as well and get in our news feed and email blasts and things like that that we do at the magazine so this past weekend i went out to lone star shooting range and academy which is based out of central texas in the florence texas area georgetown north of georgetown and uh, went and took out my beloved Mosin Nagant rifle, 762 by 54 rimmed. If you've never heard of that caliber, it's similar to a 308 or a 30 odd six, but it's Russian. And uh, it's one of the oldest rim cartridges still in existence and still in use today by uh, military forces all over the world. And uh, it's a heck of a deer hunting round. I've got a 203 grain bullet that I use. 
uh, silver bear and brown bear ammo, and I was just dialing in my uh, sporterized Mosin that I bought and had Cerakoted a couple of years ago, and uh, the Cerakote job came out great. I just haven't hunted with it since I got it Cerakoted, and I'm um, really excited about that gun in this deer season because I have some MLD hunting I'm going to do on high fences. I've got some low fence hunting I'm going to do in Brady and Mason, and um, some bow hunting I'm going to do in Bertram at DB Hunting Ranch, and really have the opportunity to do a lot of hunting and i'm very blessed about that if you don't have a place to hunt there's obviously plenty of public land spots you can go to um private land you know it comes at a premium in a lot of regards if you don't own it you can certainly find uh lease hunts or or um not necessarily leases this time of year but day hunts this time of year online any of the facebook groups i'm part of a lot of them that are you know texas hunting groups um and uh, Texas Affordable Hunts, uh, there's there's all kinds of different groups on Facebook that you can become a part of and kind of see. That's where I post a lot of the specials that I do for the businesses I work for um, on, on Facebook. So definitely check that out. Really excited about this show. Um, Rex is an incredible guest. I've really enjoyed having him on. Here's our interview. Joining me on the phone is Mr. Rex Holmes Jr. from Vapor Trail Sense. Welcome to the Best of the Outdoors podcast, Rex. Hey, man, it's great to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you. You and I initially talked because I'm in ad sales for the company, of course, and we initially talked about uh, an October ad, which which is running this month in the Texas Fishing Game. And I just got to talking to you, and you educated me so much in like five minutes of our conversation about you know um, deer hunting and deer biology and stuff. I was like, I've got to have this guy on the podcast. So, <laughs> but um, thank you so much for joining me. Oh man, hey, it's awesome, and we love talking deer hunting and fishing anything like that i mean that's our life and uh we have you know i'm getting up there in age so i've i've done a lot of watching in the woods been a lot of time and there's no place i'd rather be than up in a tree stand yep and the last guest that we had on the show, you listened to um, last uh, yesterday. You were telling me you're listening to Lou Marillo. You know he's our bow hunting editor uh, at Texas Fishing Game, and he's really big about tree stand safety. So I wanted to bring that up on a show related to hunting season since we're in October now, um, because it's so vitally important to wear a good harness and um, you know just take care of yourself when you're out in the woods so you don't have a very expensive mistake. You know, and you know what I'm talking about. Oh, definitely. I've got some real close friends, you know, that, that actually um, one of my friends broke his leg in so many places. I mean, he, you know, it, it, it's really, really bad. It, it, and it's so easy to do. Yes. I mean, he was, you know, he was in a ladder stand. He wasn't even in a climb or a lock on the ladder stand, just rolled around the tree and slung him out. You know, mm. I mean, you just, you've got to really watch your cables and especially guys that are putting nylon ratchet straps to yes. hold their hand. the squirrel to get around on the backside and him all that thing down. Yeah. You won't know it. That's you true. I've heard of many gone. stories about that. Yeah. Then, then you're down the tree pretty quick. So, yeah. Yeah. No, and guys sure. too, you know, we need to be really careful about putting those ratchet straps on and leaving them. I mean, if you, got the some of you have used chains before you know and if you put a chain on a tree that tree is growing within three yes. months you'll have to cut that chain mm -hmm. off you won't be able to get that it'll grow around it right so, yeah it'll grow so around even tree, yeah. yes even with your ratchet straps you know about every three months you need to go in there loosen them up and retighten them so that they're not at that breaking point you right. know guys i know guys that put them up and leave them up for two three years man that is dangerous yeah to, to go back yeah, to a but, stand you haven't hunted for that long and climb up there and expect everything to be just peachy as you left it i mean that's and that's especially true on public land and, and hunting you know spots like that you know that's that's definitely the case with that because you don't know what's happened in the case of of you not being there yeah and the sun deteriorates uh, yes the I, was fabric, say that too. You know, I mean it just uh yeah it's just there's so much that you got to watch out for i mean when you're in the woods us here in the south i mean we got snakes we got you know i mean a, a cousin of mine jumped slap out of the tree he was up in the tree and there was a hole in the limb above him and all of a sudden he was a chicken snake you know but he looked up and there the head of that thing was in his face <laughs> he, bailed, he bailed out of that tree and come to the house and, yeah. and 
my dad and my uncle was picking at him, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it made him so mad. He went down there and he got on the ground. When that snake stuck his head out, he shot him. When he brought it to the house, it's about six foot long, you know. He's, oh, my God. <laughs> my, dad said, my dad said, no wonder he got scared. Mm -hmm. That's a monster <laughs> snake for six feet. That's pretty good. So yeah, out of a tree a too. I mean, that's something you just don't think about finding in a tree, you know, if it's hollowed out or anything in the middle, you know, <laughs> I mean, they can live in there for sure. Yeah. You don't never know what's going to happen in the no. woods. You got to watch what you're doing, yeah. boating, you know, four wheelers. It is so easy to get turned upside down. Yep. It is. So be safe, be conscious, be aware. You know, those are all important things to talk about when you're hunting, especially around the safety topic. You can never be too safe. I mean, I've always said that on this show. Yes. Use your safety lines. I mean, a safety line's only 30 bucks. Right. You know, it's worth every penny, guys. Yeah. And get one to the one that fits you well and one that you'll wear. Uh, every time you know and don't just leave it to chance that oh i'm gonna be fine because there's plenty of guys that are in wheelchairs or worse you know that that thought that and that wasn't the case so um that's definitely a good consideration yes um yes. so you are the owner of vapor trail sense and you own flashlight accessories all kinds of different stuff i just placed a decent size order with you the other day because i've I, reading all your facebook testimonials and getting to know you over the phone i mean you just got an incredible product line and i've just got to get a hold of some of this stuff so that's why friday night i was on my phone as i'm ordering some stuff i'm doing it so we have been very blessed i mean the 33 point buck our cover scent and attractant we you know we call it a god thing because mm -hmm. i mean it it even amazes us you know i had a guy this morning send me a video deer walk straight to him up under him looking at him move up above you know smelling the 33 he what he did he walked into his ladder stand and he sprayed down right by the, you know which sprayed the ladder and whatnot and the deer was actually smelling it on the ladder you know i mean and that happens all the time but mm -hmm. it just it's it's unbelievable i mean we sit on the ground it's 90 degrees 95 well one day we went in there the truck said it was 100 degrees i mean oh. i was sweating. i was sweating so bad I was in a lock on. I was leaning out so the sweat would drop off of my face and not run down. Right. Down on me, you know, and me continuously rubbing and wiping my eyes. And, and but now I'm spraying. I ain't gonna lie to you. I was spraying quite a bit, and uh, I just to myself, there is no. I had a lady on the ground with a pistol. I said, there is no way we gonna get away with this. And six big hogs come in there. One of them stopped dead under my stand right where i mean i was literally sweating on top of it and uh, she wound up shooting the boar at like seven feet on the ground mm. on camera i mean i was up in the tree filming it you know and i mean i just i would would have bet my life there is no way this is gonna happen i yeah. mean it the stuff is unbelievable it just we call it you know being a part of the woods it makes you a part of the woods to where they i mean we have coons come sit on our legs i picked a chipmunk up one day in my hand he just looked at me like what are you you know you're <laughs> you're you're not human to them you know anymore you're it. you're part of the environment part of the woods and i mean everything that it's made out of we gather in the woods right there and we make it you know with our own two hands we bottle it with our own two hands and we label it with our own there's no machinery and well any of our stuff we make the laundry detergent 32 we mix it 32 ounces at a time in the bottle that it comes in it never sees a machine and and the thing i was going to also say is you know your product safe to the human touch i mean there's a lot of products out there that are you know more popular if you want to call them or how you know national companies and stuff like that that have these products they're not safe to spray on your skin you know and you've got to read the labels for that we were talking about that in the pre-chat before we started recording yes it is very um, there is some bad stuff out there guys i mean i'll be sure and read the labels i mean some of that stuff is even flammable yes yeah, flammable, you know, you, right you do not want to be you know <laughs> I, I don't understand. I mean, this is America. We don't do that. 
to people. We don't sell stuff that's harmful to them, you know, without letting them, you know, know up front. And I, I remember the first time, you know, that I ever tested the scent eliminating products. You know, we did a, a, a real extensive, we got every scent eliminator known to man we went to bass pro shops we bought everything they was you know i thought you know that this stuff did what they said it did you know and yes. i mean i was like everybody else i was buying it too didn't know no better i trusted them sure. and that's what we do we trust because they're they're our fellow countrymen you mm-hmm. know and it wasn't so it right. wasn't what they said, and and what happened was I uh, was in a we were in a strip pit in Illinois, running down this strip pit in the boat, and then we get out and walk up to our stand, you know, and uh, I plugged the motor up, and the gas tank had built up pressure and sprayed gasoline all up my arm, mm. and you know, and I sprayed that stuff, and it didn't do nothing, you know, so that's when we started testing, come to find out. They hardly any of it did anything, to be right. honest. You know, it was more chemicals, and that's the other thing. I mean, we don't, you take a four or five year, and if you don't believe me, take your whatever scent eliminator you're using now, go out there and spray your feeder and then watch your pictures and see what happens. Mm-hmm. You know, I sure. mean, it, it, it's not rocket science. It's easy to see where you're at, you know. Um, right. Scent elimination we, is so important. I mean, it is vitally important because that is the one thing deer and hogs especially will use to detect humans in that area is their nose before their eyes, especially in the case of wild hogs. Is that right? Oh, yes. Yes, most definitely. You take like us, okay, we smell, say we felt smell a rose. Uh-huh. You know, we barely smell that rose, but it smells good to us. And us the way we smell a rose, when that deer smells that rose to us, it would be like he stuck his nose in gasoline. <laughs> Very how, intense, in other words, yeah. That's how powerful that rose would be to a deer. And when you spray down, you got to spray down from head to toe. If you skip one spot, that's why we came up with the vapor maker, you know, to spray down with, because if you're pulling a trigger or pushing a button you know to spray down you're going to skip areas if you skip one inch you're going to get busted so scent eliminators that tell you don't get this on your skin don't get it in your eyes don't get it here i mean it's not going to do you any good you're going to get busted and that's why guys go out there with their dough and heat and whatnot i mean the the scent is going to go downwind. So when a buck's coming to you, he's walking straight into the wind. And if you've got chemicals on you and stuff like that, you know, those big bucks, I mean, it's not going to work. You'll never see him. But it, you'll never see him. He'll turn and go a different direction before. If you do see him, he's already turning head and away from you. I mean, right. I see it on these TV shows all the time, you know, and, and, It'll be on shows that are sponsored some by some of these big companies that, oh, this stuff's supposed to do this and do that. And you sit there and watch them get busted every show just about their own, you know? Yeah, um, that's a good consideration to it, make. Yes, it is an art. It's all scientific and it's not magic. You know, you got to do your part. But if you do your part, you can literally, I mean, I'll walk right by animals in the woods. I mean, I have literally, and this is this is the truth, guys. I have literally, you know, had to go to the bathroom really, really bad mm-hmm. and, and climb down out of the tree with deer watching me. Now, now this is deer that is downwind. Yes. Now, deer that are upwind, when they see me, they going to go ahead and move and get out of there. This is deer that are downwind. And they can't smell me as a human. They what? They are trying to figure out what I am because they know if I'm a human, they could smell me, and they can't smell me. It mm-hmm. throws them off. Now, I mean, I literally and and got witnesses to it. You know, uh, that this particular time, I was a camera guy. And uh, I got down and went all the way over, you know, and and came back, climbed up the tree, and 
and it was a doe and two yearlings and she had actually eased off a little bit you know when i got back she still looked around there because i mean i was in a climber climbing stand and she heard me going up the tree and watched me and they fed right back went right back under the tree and went right back up the way that they came in there you know i mean that's what i say i mean it even amazes us i mean sure. I, that that day you know if we didn't have it on film you know i don't even know if i'd be telling you about it you it'd know? be hard to i guess it you would is. say it'd be hard to believe but i mean the, the bottom line is that they trust their nose more than anything just about which i've heard before but i've never heard it put yes. the same way that you put it rex the way that you put you know you you've had your products you know that you show on facebook you're within two feet of a wild hog he doesn't even detect you're there and you're laying on the ground or not you but you know one of your teammates is laying on the ground and i mean that that stuff's just because a hog's nose is really hard to, to fool it's just like a coyote's nose and we've talked about yeah. that on this show before but i mean that's amazing yeah if a hog can smell 500 times better than a deer and 1500 times better than us and uh, i mean the piece of peppermint you get at sonic They've yes. already proved it. Now, they fed the hog peppermint, and they got them used to liking it, okay? They would move the hogs. They would bury that piece of peppermint. They went all the way down to seven foot before that hog wouldn't pick it up. <laughs> that deep, and we wonder why they're truffle, they're truffle finders, you know, finding those expensive exactly. truffles in the in the Europe European states. So, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. And them suckers are smart. I mean, they, I mean, they are smart. They know what's going on. They don't miss nothing. And kind of like a coyote, they can easily be educated too, you know. Uh, oh, yeah. They get shot at, they're going to go nocturnal. I mean, I work with a game ranch, obviously, <laughs> that um, that I, I get to see their behavior a lot under a high fence, you know. And uh, and really, you know, the feeding time, I mean, the, the last video that I did for a hog hunt with an air gun was um, a DB hunting ranch, and I shot a um, – I shot a hog, but it was like right before dark and the feeder went off and the hogs were there. I mean, just that instant, you know, and I was just like, holy smokes, man. I mean, they're really smart. They're really trained well to, to their surroundings. Mm -hmm. And you know that as well as I do. Oh yeah. When that feeder, they know when that feeder is going to go off and that old big old boar, I got that problem right now. A hill, he won't be very far from that feeder at any given time he will not let the rest of the hogs get to it i yes. mean he's gonna keep them all off of there i've seen that too yeah I mean, you gotta shoot him get him off of there before you can get the others in there you know but you know the way we get rid of them have i told you how we uh when we want to get rid of the hogs what's we that wanna really kill them out of there how we do it we take the, you know we got that dig a hole that it basically turns feed into sugar. Right, it's a mineral we'll, supplement, we'll, right? Yes, mineral. Yes, it has mineral in it, and and uh, I mean it's the most powerful concentrate ever been made. It it's a powder, so we put a little volcano shaped or pyramid shape of corn on the ground, and we sprinkle that uh, dig a hole on there, which turns that into pure sugar, mm. and animals can smell that for they can smell it for miles away mm, wow then when when the whole bunch of them comes in there you make your bottom base about two foot around in diameter and they'll get in a circle around it and we'll put our stand about 30 yards from that pile of corn or put the corn about 30 yards from your stand and when they all get in that circle you take one of them three and a half inch magnum number four buck shots and one shot and you kill every one of boom. Goodness. It's so over with. For hog control, that's pretty that's pretty effective. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah it is fun that. too. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Um, so we certainly have a hog yeah. problem in the state of Texas, especially outside of the, the game ranches that, that hunt them for for sport. But you know, I mean, it, a hand grenade has been, you know, suggested as a way to get rid of hogs, you know, and that's pretty much the gun <laughs> version of that, you know, is spray and pray with the, with the load of buckshot. But, you know, I mean, that's that, that dig a hole stuff. I ordered some of that. I, I've, 
you know, there's all kinds of different supplements on the market. You know, there's rocks, there's uh, bags of stuff. I mean, there's all kinds of different stuff. The stories that I've read on that dig a hole product are just amazing. I get something just about every day in a text message. So, you know, guys, with this one guy, this is a story here that really sticks to you. He was born, born and raised on the family property. They, it's like 600 acres, you know, and he's like 38 years old. He's been hunting there for about 30 years. Never had over two bucks on, in one pitcher on a feeder his whole life, you know, and he puts the dig a hole in the feeder and within within two days he got seven bucks oh wow and, <laughs> that's and good bucks, you know and he just mixes other, it in with a feed right is that what he was doing is just making yes. it in with the feeder okay cool yes yes you just sprinkle it like sprinkling salt and pepper on the you know on your steak or whatever sure you just uh, sprinkle it on the corn as you pour it in the feeder or if i'm by myself i put about four inches of corn in the feeder and i'll sprinkle over the top right and then kind I'll, of layer it yeah yeah, just kind of layer it in there, and then as the feeder goes off, it's, it actually, it, 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 what it, to me, it turns your feeder into a mineral site and an ice cream station. That's basically, <laughs> I love it. basically That's what great. it does. But we made it, and the way we made it, you know, minerals are bitter, bitter, bitter. So that's why, you know, a mineral site should never, ever be over 100 yards from a permanent water supply because it gets so bitter. And, I mean, you imagine putting a tablespoon of sugar in your, I mean, uh, salt in your mouth at one time. It's basically the way it tastes to an animal, and that's why they, they dig a hole as much as they do so that there's water there with it. You know, okay. Yeah, the hogs, will, especially, they'll do it. They'll do it big time. But uh, we made it. We actually, you know, tasted it. So we got it, and then I call it sweet and salty. Because <laughs> I mean, and, and and if you came here and you came in the office, you know, that's probably one. That, other than getting sprayed in the face with thirty three, that'll be the next thing you do is get to get to lick the dig a hole you know but it i mean it's so good you would eat it yourself yeah you know and that's what we've done and i mean the dad gum animals love it mm -hmm. i mean it's uh, another one of those uh, another one of our god things i guess you know we we've been very very blessed our products all of our lights everything is just i mean we're, we're just way ahead of everybody else. I mean, they, they got a lot of catching up to do, and we got a broadhead on the way. If we get it finalized, we're having trouble getting it manufactured because it's unlike anything that's ever been done before. But if oh, we yeah. get it we get it finished, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be the same way. You know, this I, I predict 60% of the animals that are shot with it, that are shot in the boiler room, are going to hit the ground right there. It's going to be oh. like shooting up shooting them with a 416 rigby you know because it's got like a gigantic cut radius this broadhead it's two and an eighth inches that's incredible but the blades don't angle back like everybody else's you know all broadheads for 50 years been built for print penetration we didn't build this for penetration we built this to rip the, the boiler room slap out of an animal and that's what it'll do as it goes through a heart or a lungs, it pulls the lungs to the inside mm -hmm. instead of pushing it away from it. Right. So, I mean, it's going to be everything going to be coming into the middle. You know, it'll be like a, a scoop. Mm -hmm. You know, when you scoop something up with this, that's you got the sides on it, it runs everything into the middle of the scoop. So you get it. Sure. So pick it up. If uh, if they slid backwards, it would just go out the sides of it. It wouldn't go in the scoop. So, and that's what we're doing. We're scooping the heart and lungs into the middle to get get ripped apart. All of your blood vessels. I mean, the heart and the lungs are solid blood vessels and air vessels. And when you disseminate those, you create shock. When you create shock, the animal don't know. Boom! He just falls dead. Yes. You know, I guarantee you if you was tied to a tree and 
I said, look, I got this 416 Rigby and I got this broadhead. Which one you want me to shoot you with? You're going to pick that bullet because you might live with that bullet. You ain't living with that broadhead. No. No, you ain't going to make it. That's incredible. And and that's the thing that I like about your stuff is that it is so forward thinking, you know, it is so, you know, revolutionary in a lot of ways because you don't have to, you're, you're, you're sent, you know, uh, eliminators and your, your, your sent, um, products are all organic for the most part. And you don't have to worry about getting them on your skin. I mean, that's what they're designed for. They come from nature. I mean, and it's just, it's nature's like the vapor maker, you know, puts everything in the particles the way the animal disperses them to begin with you know i thought that was a brilliant idea you know it's something that's natural that puts out something that's natural you know i I really think that's a good good, great idea when that doe urinates when she comes in estrus and she urinates she's 112 degrees on her private parts okay that's just like and that's how we come up with the vapor maker okay when you go out there and you urinate in the morning time and that steam's coming off of you that's what's coming off of her everywhere she goes that's nature's way to make sure she gets bred you know she's got 72 hours to conceive if she don't conceive she's got to come back and go through it all over again and believe me they will do everything in their power buck and dough to make sure that she conceives because she does not want to be late right and, you know, what guys don't understand, too, and I mean, this is a proven fact right now. Everywhere in the United States, 365 days out of the year, there's a doe getting bred somewhere, hmm. somewhere in the United States. I got right now today, and, you know, when they want to talk about climate change and this, that, and the other, I got, I got, uh, a spotted fawn, I guarantee, is not two weeks old. Goodness. Right now. You know, with a doe on my feet or right now. You know, it's it's really, you know. And I tell guys, anytime the temperature is under 40 degrees, you can use doe and heat. And if there's a buck gets damn wind of you, he is going to come check it out. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't think you benefit enough from it once it gets over 40 degrees to, and this is just from experiencing the tree and watching it. I mean, we film, I've shot one deer in four years, you know, I'm too busy watching and learning. I, yeah. I get too much out of learning from it to, you know, to shoot now, grant you, if a once <laughs> a Boone and Crockett walks out there, he's going to get shot. Yeah. But, you know, I've never killed a Boone and Crockett, but uh, if I get an opportunity, I don't think I'm going to pass that one up. Yeah. But I've killed real close, you know, but uh, and I've hunted public land. We, but we still do. We hunt more public land now than we do private land. Yes. We still do. We get we get a better understanding of our products and how they work and and how the deer react to yes. everything, you know. No, that's great. And I mean, that's one reason why I wanted to have you on because you have so much knowledge when it comes to, and you're so accessible. That's the thing. I know you own this company and everything, but I mean, you're so accessible to talk deer hunting, you know, about, you know, and, uh, your phone number's on your website. And I mean that you and I have hit it off from the beginning because I've just, you're, you're so full of knowledge, you know, that I need, you know, and that's why I wanted to have you on the show. Yeah, so. we're learning. I mean, we're still learning. We, uh, you know, you don't never know everything i you mean you should never stop bit. learning i think is the point there. yes yeah yes yes and you know i don't know you've heard me say before something i'd like for people to understand too is you know the scrape that's that buck cell phone mm-hmm. that, that's where he gets his messages from you know i mean we all my life, I was told, oh, the deer goes there and rubs its preordable glands on that limb. That's why it's there. Well, that, that always bothered me. You know, number one, I'm sitting there thinking, you know, he would take a chance on poking his eye. And and why would that limb always be dead center of that scrape? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, yep. there's got to be a reason for that That limb. I mean, if they were just rubbing their pre-audible glands in their face on there wouldn't be no reason for that thing to be dead center and for him to make sure 
that he got dead under that limb and pawed it out perfectly clean up under it, you know, and I sat there and I watched them bucks with binoculars and with that camera, that 20X camera, that's the thing right there. You don't miss, you know, you can't see it in that tree. You go home and you watch it on the big screen TV. It's like night and day yeah, difference. It is. You watch that buck. I mean, he makes dead gum sure. He puts all four feet together. He looks up. He makes sure he's like, we'd be throwing a rope over a limb to lift something, you know, right, make exactly. sure he's in the right spot. That's what he done. I said, they got to be a reason. Then here comes this doe. She comes in there and she gets dead under that limb. She squats. That steam comes off of her and goes right up and sticks to the bottom of that limb. I said, "Uh uh-huh. Then the buck comes in there and he goes over there and he smells that limb and licks that limb and tastes that limbs. And he knows exactly. She's close. She ain't. She ain't, but maybe two three hours from the, I got to go find her, mm-hmm. you know, that's how that works. And that's why he's got multiple scrapes. Yes. This doe comes in there. She don't have to go to that. She go over there and get her own little scrape, leave him his message. You know, he starts getting messages on them scrapes. His testosterone will be like me. I start getting two or three good looking women, including <laughs> me on his cell phone. My <laughs> testosterone climbs. You yes. Know? Yeah. So instead of them, right, instead of them does going in there leaving them messages, you go in there and leave them messages always in the daytime, never at night, because you, you don't want him in there at night. No. You want him to think, he knows when she's there. That's, that hussy's coming in here in the daytime, <laughs> you know. Yeah, gum. Same way with your dominant buck. If you want to spray your dominant buck, we got a bad habit of going in there and do it in the morning, you know, so we get in our stand. Right. Well, that buck's in there at the night. He said, oh, I'll get him tomorrow night. But if you go in there like three days in a row and you do it in the daytime, he said, oh, man, I got to come in here and run that sucker off. And about that fourth day, you got a good opportunity of that sucker, especially with good cover sense, see? You get away with because he's going to come in from damn wind. Ain't no if, ands, or buts about it. Yes. You got to be sprayed down. You got to be covered up. You got to got to take care of your end of the deal. So when he comes in there, you can, you can put the killer in him. Yeah. No, that's good. And I mean, that's stuff I've, I've kind of known, known about, but I mean, you have just explained it in such a better way for me to understand that they can even tell how old a sin is. That's how good the nose is, you know? Oh, yes. I mean, definitely. and, and that, and that the doe peas at the bottom of the tree and that the deer can smell on the limb, you know, the vapors that raise up from the pea, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I didn't think yep. of it from a molecular level like that. You know, I just kind of thought of it from yep. a scent, a general, just a general level because i've used dough and heat for years but i've never really been very successful with it you have helped me up my game sir <laughs> yeah so the other the other thing is that we've recognized too that most people have a key to on okay soil is very very acidic okay so when you put urine in the soil i don't i think it kills the pheromones i mean i don't i mean we peed and we had 150 something inch deer coming into a scrape every day, every day, every day, right after dark, right after dark. He was right after dark every day. So the last day of hunting season, I wasn't hunting him. A friend of mine was and the last day of hunting season. He got mad and it was got late, late. He run down there and he peed all over that scrape. Went back up there, jumped up in the tree. The buck come in there and squatted, stayed there for, 45 minutes squatted <laughs> right in there where he so so i took my urine right i went out there and i cleaned me out a spot real clean and i smelled of the urine and i put it in the soil and i smell of it in the soil it's totally different it's like it killed it Interesting. you know i think i honestly believe that the acidity of the soil and the whatnot changes that urine to where it's not any good now, the urine that's on the bushes, same way with a dog. When a dog goes looking, he smells everything up off the ground. Yes. You know, and and let's say a dog went over, a female dog went over to a bush and urinated. Yes, it's all over the ground, 
but the steam, even if it's 100 degrees out, when they announced us, the steam's still coming off of there. We can't see it like you can on a cold morning, but it's still doing the same thing and right. sticking to the bushes and whatnot like that. I mean, it, it's, it's all scientific when you look at it and not complicated. It's just scientific to where we have to put the little factors together as to how we can use it to make the bucks do what we want them to do. Right. It's, it's, a, it's in their DNA. We're just trying to understand that and, right. uh, and adapt to that and basically be where they are and, you know, know when they're going to come in and that kind of stuff. I mean, I, this is just, this is great information to pass on to our hunters out there. I mean, I, that's why I wanted to have you on because, um, you know, understanding it at that level just really helps you up your game because there's so much, I mean, there's so much about hunting you learn through a lifetime. You know that as well as I do, you know, but, yeah. you know, to really understand why it works that way from a biological level, I think is just crucially important to be a better hunter. Mm -hmm. The main thing with hunting now, that is the biggest thing is, is not as a really and truly, and I've learned this from moving around on my stands and doing things. And, you know, sometimes I'll get in a stand, oh, I'm going to go over there, you know. It's not that big a deal to move around in the woods. The big deal is to move around in the woods and putting your scent out. Even, you know, guys will jump on their four-wheeler, oh, I'm going to run over there and put some corn in his feeler, and I'm not going to spray down. Well, as you're going, the wind's blowing your scent across all of your acreage. Yes. You know, you're leaving. Now, we all know that they get used to tractors and the smell, and they don't pay that, the smell of the four-wheeler. They don't pay that as much of attention as they do that smell of you. Right. You know, you know and a lot of times, and, you know, it depends on the areas how – how much hunting pressure and whatnot we all know that you can get on your tractor and ride down through there and they won't pay you any attention you know but you go walking across there and it's a whole eight bar the door but sometimes <laughs> if you if you do the same thing every day every day every day they get used to it and they get till you shoot at them or something like that to change the scenario they'll stand i mean we we know people that have you know, set on there, especially up north when the weather gets really, really bad. They sit out there and feed them out of their hands. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, they are animals as we are animals, and they can be, you know, you can be nice, and they will be nice to you. Yes. You know, I mean, it, does. it takes a period of time, but it can be done, and that's one of the things that makes it hard for you know, even us, I mean, we we did some shows the other day at the TV studio, you know, and I had to give the guy some of our videos and a bunch of the executives from the TV show, TV station were in there. They said, oh, no, that's not real. That's not real. And the guy that had the video, you know, he said, look, I edited it and the guy never cut the camera off. He said, I'm telling you, this is legit, you know, and they said, oh, he's in a pen. He said. Uh, no, but I know this guy I've been there. He said he he said some of this stuff's on public land, you know. But it it's hard to get people to you know. But once guys pick it up, they use it and they see it in the woods for themselves. You can't take it away sold. from them. Yeah, they're sold on it's, it. It's a it's a done deal, and you couldn't you couldn't. I mean. I mean, I've had guys literally threaten me, you know, <laughs> I've got, I've got to have this, you know, yep. you better not ever quit making this Rex. <laughs> yeah. Well, we did for two years back yonder. We weren't ready for the, you know, the takeoff and we, we ran out twice, two years in a row. We went out just for a few days, you know, and then, and even today I'll have a guy order six and eight quarts, you know, mm -hmm. at a time, mm -hmm. you know, at the beginning of the year, they don't want to, you know, they make dead gum sure they ain't running out. Yeah, they're going to stock it, up it and save. Gonna, yeah. Yeah, yeah right. it ain't going to happen, but it's. Stack it deep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's fun. I mean, it really, I have to say, it is really fun. I mean, you know, uh, growing up and getting, when I started this company, the reason I did, I had 23 deer come out on me. I had a six. 
by 12 windows, six inches tall, 12 inches wide window in a shooting house. I had 23 deer come out and every one of them busted me. Some of them was just, you know, they just turned and went back the way they came. Some of them snorted, throw the fit and run 90 miles an hour, but 23 deer, every one of them turned around and went back the way that they came, you know, and that's when I said they has got to be, and I had, this was only in 2008 and I had all of the, you know, the clothing on and sure. took showers in the shampoo and all did of that. All of it right. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Did everything right. Did not walk anywhere. Right. The guy, I, I came out of the lodge and stepped in a suburban and the guy drove me to this stand. Never been on a outfitted hunt in my life. Some friends of mine going and begged me to go with them. The guy drove me within five foot of the stand. I walked up in there. It was nice and cool that afternoon. I wasn't sweating or right. nothing. Right. And went in 23 deer. I wish I had it on camera. I'd give anything. They if I all had that busted on. you. Wow. Yeah. Every one of them, I never dreamed I'd ever own a camera, even at that time, you know, much less inventing something. Right. You know, I mean, I'm just a, I'm just a dumb old country boy. <laughs> I don't honest. think you are. I think you're a smart guy. <laughs> You've taught That's me a the lot. Truth. No, I'm I, telling you the truth yeah, there, buddy. Well. <laughs> And, you know, the thing is, I mean, everybody, every hunter, if you've hunted any time at all, knows the feeling when that doe starts blowing at you or when that buck, you know, runs away. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it, it, I, I hunted a lot of urban property for a long time, uh, Brushy Creek and the Round Rock area of Central Texas. And, um, you know, I've got I've, I've got videos on YouTube of that kind of stuff. I uh, mean, 20 yards from a deer, make it a crossbow shot, you know doesn't matter how good I was doing on the scent control. I'd spray myself down. It wasn't enough. They still came in and busted me. And, you know, I, I just, I, I had been looking for a product that was going to really work, you know, and I think I found it because of you. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> but I, I, the thing I didn't really understand is why, you know, I had a little zipper opening. She could see through that opening. She could see the movement in the blind through that opening, even though I was completely covered in black clothes in a in a you know dark uh, pop up blind. You know, I mean, they're so intuitive when it comes to predators uh, and humans. You know, um, it just amazes me how how amazing that species of deer and and especially wild hogs for scent. You know, really is. Yeah, and that's the thing too. When they smell a hint and they see movement that really multiplies it. If they see movement and they don't smell the scent, they will stand there and try and figure it out. They will watch and then they'll try and fool you. They'll put their head down and pop it up real quick. You know, I mean, you can and kind tell, of be on alert, I guess is what you're trying to say. Right. right. Yeah. Like they trying to, they trying to make you jump mm -hmm. what they're trying to do. Just like they and, paw at the ground and that kind of stuff too. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep trying to catch you movement moving yourself you know mm -hmm. and set a trap for you basically and i mean and in just in all honesty when you're sprayed down and and you're part of the environment and i mean i've done it you'll watch our videos i do it i lean up against a tree in a wide open mm -hmm. you know I, I i associate it when you're you know, when you're like two, three foot from an animal, a deer or a hog, I associate it with riding a bull. When you riding a bull, there can be 150,000 people in the bleachers. You don't hear nothing. You don't see yeah. nothing. You know, you're blank. Well, that's the way it is. When you get two foot from an animal in the woods, you have to be blank. You cannot, you can't be staring at anything. You got to be a, uh, what the military calls a thousand yard stare. Mm -hmm. You know, once you learn how to do that, become, become one with the woods. I mean, you can, you can literally do things on, you know, unimaginable with animals and get away with it. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is fooling that nose, which I, up to this point, mm -hmm. you know, I've tried a lot of different scent detections. One thing that uh, are scent elimination products, one of the things that Bill Henson and uh, Randy McMillan, Mac and Prowler, who I worked with their TV show for a number of years, uh, they've said on this podcast before is you can't fool a coyote's nose. You know, it's hard. 
Uh, but I think with the right complete scent system like you've got, I mean, I think it's definitely doable, but, um, they're smart, you know, they're, they, they're educated. And every time you make a mistake, you've educated them, you know, on deer, hogs, you know, uh, uh, predators, whatever. So, yep. I tell you what we can do. There's a guy that writes for field and stream that did a study with dogs and I tried every way in the world to get in touch with him because I wanted to do the same thing with our stuff. But I have literally laid on the ground, you know, face down and had a guy with a German shepherd walk within three foot of me. And the German <laughs> shepherd never knew I was there, never picked me up. You That's know? great. And a dog's yeah. nose is certainly a lot more powerful. We talked about that on the last show, you know, a lot more powerful than a human nose and a little bit less powerful mm -hmm. than a deer's nose, but that's good. I mean, cause they use dogs for, you know, a wide variety of different things there. I mean, that's really good. It, it just, I mean, I'll just be honest. It amazes us too. I'm not going to lie to you. It amazes us. Ever we always were getting away about, it was three, four weeks ago. And this is all on film. My son was laying on the ground and I'm not kidding you from my son's nose to that hog's nose was probably three inches. But I'm going <laughs> to say it was six, just so I'm not even getting close to telling the Be conservative. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah. But, and I mean, and he was, and it was one of those things and I wish you could see the video. They're, they're working on it and it might've got published today he was he he said daddy i was shaking i was shaking so <laughs> bad he said i don't know but what happened was we always if you watch our videos we always got a automatic pistol in our hand yeah. always you right, know just in we case. never do it without that and he had left his pistol at home and i got two vehicles i was in the trailblazer that day because i went to the office and all and I didn't have, well, I had a pistol in there, but it was only a 22. And so we didn't get it. And he didn't have a pistol. And when he grabbed that hog, he grabbed that one by the back legs. Of course, there was no, it was too big. There was no way he could hold on to it after. He'd been laying on the ground for over three hours mm. when they came. So, you know, you get your muscles get, you know, I mean, there was no way. But. When the hog run off, I'm telling him to get out. We build a little cutty hole we get in, you know, to be hid. And I'm telling him to get out of there. And he's not doing it because the hogs are right there. They ain't left. I mean, they still ain't smelled him, and they don't know what he is. They try, of course, two, three of them, they got a clue. That one's the only one that got grabbed. But uh, anyway, he finally gets out of there. I'm hollering at him to get out. I'm only... I'm only like 18 yards from him in the shooting house. And he finally gets out. When he does, he's standing there and that boar decides to come back in there, the biggest one. And he starts back in there. And of course, Bo starts trying to figure out a place to get up a tree. You know, when he starts moving real fast, of course, I get tickled. And, uh, and, uh, but anyway, the boar, I guess, cause Bo was jumping around and you know how you do when you I'm gonna go this way or that way, which way am I going to go? And the boar stopped and, and Bo turned around and said, daddy, that, that come things right there, you know, and he didn't have, no, he didn't have no, if he'd had a gun, he could have just stood there and let the hog come right up. Well, he could have shot, you know, right. But, it, it done got too late. I didn't have good camera. Right. Actually, actually it was, I had the lights on already. Then the hog was out of the light frame, but he could have waited till the hog got into the lights. I mean, he could have shot it right there by mm. him. Would have made the foot, made the footage even way more better, you know, but what a story. Wow. Well, yeah. Yeah. And well, we do good. that all the time. It's not something we, you know, we do it every, every chance we get, we go down there and we, we play with them and the deer. I mean, we've had five deer within eight yards of us for two and a half hours, mm. never cut the camera off, never cut the camera off for two and a half hours, that's you know, and, that's, and, and you got to imagine, and, and it was, I think it was 93 that day, 93 degrees. I mean, and, uh, you got to imagine sitting there sweating for two and a half hours and an animal not picking you up. Yep. I mean, that's, that's amazing. That is pretty I, good. I don't care. I don't care who you are, what you are. That's to do that is it's unbelievable. No, it really yeah. is. 
Well, um, we need to wrap it up for the day uh, for the podcast. Can I get you? Will you please give the listeners the uh, way we can find you on social media and find you on your website and order your product? Yes, we are on Facebook. Uh, my personal page is Rex Holmes Jr. The company page is Vapor Trail Sense LLC. We actually have two websites. Uh, www.vaportrailsense.com and www.vaportrailoutdoors.com yep. so and got two websites because it gets gets a little rambunctious there sometimes so. <laughs> <laughs> i've been to both of them and i ordered off of vapor trail since and that was an easy process i paid with my paypal account i mean it was it was super easy and if, if you don't have a credit card or if you don't have a PayPal account, you can still use your credit card or debit card to pay. You know, it's really slick. So, um, yes. I really enjoy well, the order process. You, yes, we use PayPal to that they collect our money for it. So, don't think you got to have a PayPal right. account to order off of there. You don't have to. No, that's um, great, and you get it shipped straight to your yeah. door. And you're in some stores, but I don't think you're much in Texas right now, so folks can order it online. But I mean, I've just been impressed. That's why I made the order when I did. I was just like, well, I've got to give this guy, I got to give this stuff a try. I mean, I've just seen too much, too many videos and stuff, watching, you know, and just it, you're just too neat of a guy to talk to to not have you on the show. So, <laughs> so well, we really appreciate it, and we've enjoyed it. You sure you don't want to talk another two hours? <laughs> <laughs> I want to have you back on for sure. Definitely. So, um, but no, this has been great. I really appreciate the educational uh, tidbits that you've shared with us about a deer's nose and wild hogs and uh, mm -hmm. deer hunting and just all the different things. I just want to thank you again for being on the show. Yeah. I want to give the guys one last tech tip before we go. Sure. You say your listeners love tech tips. Yes, okay, guys. Real quick guys, when you're, when you're out there and you're in your climbing stand, you come out of the stand and you get ready to go home, you know, we don't think about it. We leave that stand right there at a nose, at the deer's nose level, you know. Take your stand, spray your stand down with your scent eliminator and take your stand and push it up on the tree as high as you can so the animals are walking under it and not smelling it, not bumping oh, into it. Oh, yeah what it is you know it makes a huge difference yeah and coming back and hunting that area again sure exactly absolutely yes. that's great that's a great tip no that's wonderful well, thank, yeah thanks so much for joining us and uh and being a part of the show this week yes next time we'll talk about how to spray down and where to spray down and what your top areas for dispersing scent for the animals to smell and you'll be amazed what the number two spot is on your body so <laughs> We um, really appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And there he goes, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Rex Holmes Jr., VaporTrailSense.com, VaporTrailOutdoors.com. Great guy. Uh, really enjoy. We just we just shoot the bull every once in a while. He'll call me up ever since we started working together with Texas Fish and Game. Uh, you know, he advertises in our magazine in the October issue. He uh, He's just, we just pick up the phone and call each other. I mean, we're like buddies that have never met each other. You know, it's kind of cool. But I uh, really enjoyed that interview. I really enjoyed that time to spend with Rex and um, really invite our listeners to check out their products because I just got my stuff in the mail the other day. The flashlight's one of the brightest headlamps, like I said earlier, that I've ever used. Um, the, uh, the vapor maker, the different scents that they have and scent covers and 33 buck, dig a hole, all their different products are just uh, really, really neat. And I get to use them and field test them this year myself and really get to see how they work in my part of Central Texas where I hunt and West Central Texas, that area, because I hunt a Mason and Brady uh, for gun hunts. And then I, I uh, bow hunt at DB Hunting Ranch and Bertram, uh, all in the Texas Hill Country. So really enjoy doing that. So I've been really busy working on websites for people and getting market materials and brochures and stuff like that done. I wanted to also recommend if you don't have a spot to hunt, check out in here in Central Texas, DB Hunting Ranch. They have a... Um, uh, a couple of specials going on right now. You can visit them at dbhunting.com. That's dbhunting.com. I'll put that in the show notes. Uh, if you're looking for a deer processor, we've got uh, wild game processing and taxidermy done by those guys as well. It's DB Wild Game Processing and Taxidermy. They're located on Highway 29 in uh, Bertram 
and a great place to take your deer uh, or wild hog or any kind of exotic that you take throughout the season to uh, to go check them out. And I will have Danny Berry on the podcast one of these days. I'm positive of it. Um, we uh, we talk just about every night and have a good opportunity to have him on the show to talk about hunting and uh, everything that he's involved in with uh, the outdoor industry. So I'm excited about that. All right. So, Vapor Trail Sense, check these guys out, and uh, thank you so much again for watching, for reading, for listening, and have an awesome day in the outdoors. Mm-hmm.